good whatever time of day it might be when you're watching this. This is the Math Rebbe, hosted by yours truly, Danielle, where we talk about math and halacha with a side of bad puns. Today we're going to be talking about pi, not the edible type, and square roots, not the type that anger and misshapen trees. I'd like to start off by saying that these numbers are a little irrational if you catch my drift. Even Pythagoras' followers thought so. They killed Pythagoras for proving it. Nice guys. Maybe as irrational as the numbers they studied. Anyway, cue theme song. Maybe that'll cheer you up. Unless you're still keeping sphere from five minutes ago when the last episode was uploaded. Say you want to carry in a mavoi, an alleyway on Shabbos. One way to do this is to put a korah, a beam, across the entrance to the alleyway. Due to the magic of Halachal's Moshe Misenai, we can treat this as a solid fourth wall. Try not to break it, fourth walls tend to be broken an awful lot. Anyway, this beam needs to be wide enough and strong enough to support a half brick. That said, a straw korah, which obviously can't support a half brick, can be treated like metal such that it is able to support it. Likewise, a bent kora, which can't support it at its bend, is treated like it's straight. What about a round kora? Any bricks that are thrown onto it will just fall right off. Nevertheless, we treat those like they're square so that the brick will stay steady. What exactly is so novel about the fact that round koras are treated like square ones how is that any worse than the straw coros playing heavy metal? The answer says Rabbi Yochanan is absolutely nothing. The Mishnah only taught it because of the second clause. A diameter of one yields a circumference of three. The Gemara thus asks, how do we know that a diameter of one yields a circumference of three? Um, how do we know it? Didn't they have tape measures back then, or at least string that they could compare to a ruler? Just measure the circumference and measure the diameter, and you'll see that it's true. The Tuzla Rosh and the Archa Shochan give two similar but distinctly different explanations of this question, which we'll come back to in next week's episode. The Tuzla Rosh explains that the focus is on the circumference. In Kol Kula, how do we know that you can assume pi equals 3? The Archa Shochan flips the question. The diameter is too short. A 3 tefach circumference means that the Korah is less than 1 tefach wide. How do we know that we can carry in this Mavoy anyway? The answer lies in the Pasuk in Malachim Aleph regarding the Yam Shlomo. The Pasuk says, V'yas Ziyam Mutzak, he Shlomo HaMelech made the sea molten, or rather he had Chiram make it molten. Eser Ba'ama Misfasu Atzfasu, ten Amos from one edge to the other, Agul Salviv, it was round. V'chamish Ba'ama Kumaso, it was five Avmos tall. V'kav Shloshim Ba'ama Yasavos Saviv, and a thirty Amma line could surround it. And a few psukim later, it says, "Va'avav tefach, its width was a tefach, usfaso kimasa svas kusperch shusha, and its lip was like that of a rose petal cup, alpine bas yacho, and it could hold two thousand bas." Asks the Gemara, "So what that the circumference was thirty and the diameter was ten? The circumference could have been thirty. The walls had some thickness, which means that the circumference should be more than 30. Now, we just said that it was the thickness of a rose flower, quite negligible indeed. But wait a second, rose flowers have some thickness, still not infinitesimal. Why shouldn't that skew the calculations? It must be then that the circumference was measured from the inside. Two points about pi before we move on. First, the Tash base brings down two tzadim regarding the nature of this approximation. The first is that it's a halachal Moshe Misenai that we can approximate pi at three. The second is that it's just easier to understand when you're reading the Gemara to round pi off at three. The second point is that, as we mentioned earlier, pi is irrational. Not only does it never end, but it never repeats. Technically, that means that your birthday, your age, your home phone number, your cell phone number, your work number, the gematria of your name, all those of the other 7.4 billion people we share the world with, and all of those who came before us, and any no other number you could think of, appears at least once in here. Must be a stalker's dream if he knows where to look. 
The point is that no matter where we cut it, it's still an approximation. See what I did there? Point, cut, forget it. So we might as well, says the Rambam, just stop at the decimal points. On to tree <coughs> square roots, specifically that of the number 2. Guess what? That's also irrational. So we're just going to round it off at 1.4. Thus the Gemara says in Sukkah, among other places, Kol Amsa Bribua, for any Amma on the side of a square, Amsa Utri Chom Shebach Sona, there's 1.4 Amos on the diagonal. You can easily prove this from the Pythagorean theorem, as I briefly mentioned at the beginning of this episode. This theorem, which we'll spend a great deal discussing in a few upcoming episodes, says that any right triangle, if you take the two legs of a triangle, you square them, you add up the results, and you take the square root of that, you'll get the length of the hypotenuse. Since we're dealing with a square, the two sides are the same length. So we'll set a equal to b, and that leaves us with a squared plus a squared equals c squared. You can combine the two a squareds to make, well, 2a squared equals c squared. Just take the square root of both sides, and you get a root 2 equals c. In case you're wondering, there is another formula very similar to this one that works for all triangles, not just right ones. Even Democrats are allowed in math. We'll discuss that more in episode 7. Toast was given ingenious proof that 1.4 is not exactly the square root of 2. Start with a 10 by 10 square and cut it into 4 5 by 5 squares. Now make another square by drawing the diagonals of these 5 by 5 squares. Since the smaller square was made by cutting each corner of the bigger square in half, it follows that the smaller square has half of the area of the bigger square. Since the bigger square has an area of 100, 10 by 10, the smaller square must have an area of 50. If we use the square root of 2, easy multiplication shows that this indeed yields an area of 50. But if we use 1.4 instead, we end up with 49, not 50. Thus we see that 1.4 is inexact. Now that we're all squared away with that, so to speak, we have a problem to address. When we discussed pi, we rounded it off to 3, with no decimal places. But when we rounded off the square root of 2, we did so with one decimal point. Why don't we round pi at 3.1? Now, if you hold like the side of the Tash Bates that these numbers are halachs and mosh misinai, there's no issue. For whatever reason, the numbers were rounded off like so. But according to the Tzad that's to make things easier to understand, why is pi easier to understand at no decimal points, but the square root of 2 is at 1.4? Perhaps we can explain via a peculiarity in the Magen Mishnah. He says in Hilchus Ervin that you can't rely on the square root of 2 equals 1.4. But he also says in Hilchus Shabbos that you can rely on pi equals 3. Why is one irrational number any different than the other? It's just totally irrational. Maybe the reason is as follows. The square root of 2 doesn't have a pasuk to support that approximation. But pi equals 3, we just saw, does have a pasuk. Thus, we can rely on the approximation for pi, but not on the approximation for the square root of 2. How does this answer a question? By showing the square root of 2 with an extra decimal place, we're showing that we're unsure about what comes after the decimal, just that it's around 1.4. We can't rely on it. But by holding pi at 3, we're showing that they are sure about it, since it has a pasuk, and thus we can rely on it. And that's significant digits. The last decimal point is always imprecise, but by holding pi at 3, they're showing that they're certain about it. There's no imprecision whatsoever. And with that um, point resolved, one last thing on the topic of pi and root 2. I'd like to note the fact that although the word used for circumference, kav, is read as such, it's written kava with a he at the end. It's said in the name of the Vilna Gaon, but more likely this shot came from Rav Matsyao Kohen Monk. If you take the gematria of Kava and divide by the gematria of Kav, you get 1.047169. If you divide pi by 3, you get almost the same number, 1.047197. After rounding off at four decimal places, the numbers are the same, 1.0472. Thus we see that the true values of both are in the same proportions with the respective values we actually use for them. 
Not only that, but it's in the very pasuk that we use in our discussion of pi. Now you might find this a little fishy, so here's some statistics for you. Some form of the word kav, that is kav with a prefix maybe, appears 16 times in Tanakh. Of these, three have a kriyuk siv, and that does not include the pasuk in Devray Yamim that talks about the Yamsha Shtoma. If that's not enough to convince you, I don't know what will. I hope you all enjoyed this video, and please like, subscribe, and comment if you did. I include my sources in this video's description, and feel free to check them out. And this episode, that includes the list of the 16 uses of Kav. Next week, we'll be discussing something we briefly touched upon in this episode, whether you can be so meek on these approximations. The answer is no, unless you're a rev who wants to give his math textbook the title of Rabbi.